So welcome everyone. I'm uh, Monique Tsan and on behalf of the SIB, the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics, I'd like to welcome you to this course uh, on mining enzyme data in Uniprot KB using RIA. And uh, the trainers today are Anne Morga, Elisabeth Gersteiger, Marie-Claude Blatter and Farid Mansal. So mining enzyme data in Uniprot KB using, uh, using RIA. So the course this afternoon will be divided in uh, three parts. I will start with the first part on uh, describing chemi uh, resources that involve chemical information. The second part on enzyme sequences will be uh, provided by uh, Marie-Claude. And uh, these are the two big parts of, uh, of the course. And we will uh, finish by a short introduction on uh, semantic web, RDF, and, uh, and Sparkle. As uh, Monique said, uh, if you want to ask some questions, we provide a Google Doc with this uh, tiny URL, but it's also in, in the chat. So you can ask a question if something is not uh, clear. OK, let's start. So just as an introduction, how do enzyme works in order that we, we get all the same uh, basics. So we will show you just a, a short video that is uh, provided by the training course at uh, PDB, the Protein Data Bank. And uh, they have a very, very nice uh, video. So this is, uh, we will see the, how they describe uh, enzyme. Every single second, inside every living cell, thousands of chemical reactions are taking place. These reactions are performed by enzymes. An enzyme is a protein that catalyzes a chemical reaction. It initiates the reaction, speeds up the reaction's progress, and makes sure the outcome is always the same. These enzymes often work together to form longer pathways, such as the citric acid cycle, which is a series of chemical reactions used by cells to generate energy from carbohydrates. The essential tasks of life, such as metabolism, protein synthesis, and cell renewal and growth, are all regulated by enzymes. The life-sustaining power of enzymes lies in the fact that they catalyze reactions in mild conditions of pH, temperature, and atmospheric pressure. The rates of catalyzed reactions are millions to trillions times faster than those of the same reactions uncatalyzed. To speed up a reaction in the absence of enzyme, additional energy would need to be provided as heat, which jostles the substrates and occasionally provides enough energy to trigger a reaction. In the course of most reactions, an unstable and highly energetic transition state is formed as the substrates are transformed into products. An enzyme acts as a template for the reaction, binding to its substrate and holding it in the proper position to form the product. An enzyme also surrounds its substrate with reactive groups that stabilize the transition state, making it easier for the reaction to occur. So I will stop the, the video here because after it's an example of one specific enzyme and we will show this example in uh, during the, the practicals. So what we will see this afternoon is the enzyme ecosystem at uh, SwissProt, the SwissProt uh, group. So we are, we are developing several uh, resources. Developing that means we are curating and developing uh, functional annotation uh, resources in different uh, areas. This afternoon, we will see, uh, I will present reaction, enzyme classification with EC number, and the KB uh, ontology. And after this uh, section, uh, Marie-Claude will present the Uniprot resource. So I divided uh, this chemical information the section in different parts. We will start by uh, uh, see what is the enzyme classification. Then I will present you the rare resource, the KB resource, how we can perform 
search in, in RIA and the different export of the, of the RIA resource. So the enzyme uh, classification is uh, divided by the nomenclature committee of the International Union of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, NCIUBMB. You can see sometimes this, uh, this acronym. And this committee is in charge of classifying enzymes according to the, reaction, the reactions they catalyze. In the group, Christian Axelsen, one of our expert uh, biocurator, is part of the, this enzyme nomenclature uh, committee. There are seven uh, main enzyme classes in this uh, classification. So from one to, to seven, oxidoreductase, transferase, hydrolases, lyases, isomerases, ligase, and transloca translocase. On this part, you have the main reaction that are catalyzed by this, uh, by this reaction, by this uh, enzyme classes, excuse me. Yeah. Okay, so the first enzyme commission, it was in uh, 1961, so six, more than 60 years uh, ago. They devised the system for classification of enzyme, and this system must also serve as a basis for assigning code numbers to, to, to the enzyme. So this is the origin of the EC number, these code numbers prefixed by EC, the EC number contain four elements separated by dots. What is important in the enzyme classification is that it's a classification with a fixed depth. We have only four uh, levels in the enzyme classification. So we have seen the first level, then for example, in the main class of transferase, the subclass 2.1 is the enzyme that are transferring one carbon atoms. In this subclass, this is the subset of enzymes that are acting on hydroxymethyl formid, formid or related molecule. And finally, the uh, what we call complete EC number is a specific class of enzyme that catalyze a given, uh, a given reaction. Explorance is uh, the resource that uh, contains only uh, the IUBMB enzyme nomenclature. So you, you can see here two examples of uh, I, uh, an EC number uh, entry. So you have the EC number, you have information on the uh, different names and, uh, and synonyms. And what is of interest for us is the reaction part. But you can see that IUBMB provide reaction only as a text definition. So it's a semi-structured text like this chemical equation. But we also have information in the common section. For instance, in this case, they say that the dialanin 2 hydroxymethyl transferase 2.1.2.7 is also acting on 2 hydroxymethyl serine. So I insist on this because there are several resources that are describing the IUBMB enzyme classification. So in the group, the enzyme uh, at, uh, at Expasi, but you have also Brenda or Keg or Metacyc. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, description in the mix of uh, structured and natural language is uh, subject to uh, different uh, politic of editorial board of the different uh, resources that explain why we don't have the same uh, why we don't have the same con content in these uh, resources sometimes uh, an EC number an enzyme class is described by a reaction totally in a natural language in particular the uh, hydrolases the proteas so the reaction is described as release of an N-terminal amino acid from a given peptide, et cetera. And in, in this case, it's not possible to translate uh, the reaction into an explicit, uh, into an explicit uh, form. So all the reaction of the enzyme classification that are in, uh, in enzyme at Expasi, if it was possible, have been translated into rare reaction that I will present just, uh, just after. What we can say is that 88% of the EC numbers are linked to one or several reactions. RIA, the rare resource, uh, has been at the origin uh, designed to um, represent, 
to have an explicit representation of this uh, chemical uh, reaction. But today, uh, more than, uh, if more than 52% uh, of rare reactions are linked to EC number, we can see that we have a great number of uh, reactions that are not yet classified to be enzyme classification. Mm -hmm. So here is uh, an example of a different uh, kind of uh, enzyme catalyzed uh, reaction. We can see that uh, this reaction can involve different types of uh, participants. So I uh, colored the participant according to, to, to their type. In this first uh, reaction, all the participants are fully defined small molecules. In this second example, in blue, we will have some abstract compound, a D-alpha amino acid. We can have also macromolecules like uh, this uh, D-alanine carrier protein that is involved as participant of a reaction and not as the uh, enzyme. We can also have nucleic acid like uh, this uh, enzyme class that catalyzes modification of tRNA. And eventually, we can have some reaction that involve polymer we can have some polymerization uh, reaction, but are different type of uh, polymer compared to proteins and nucleic, uh, nucleic uh, acids. So here, more in detail, in REA, we will represent this, uh, you have the, exp the structural representation of uh, this, uh, this reaction. So these two uh, reactions are related because a D-alanine is a specific form of a D-alpha amino acid. We can see that when we have this reaction, we will have a, a, a molecular structure with an R group. In the case of this specific enzyme, this R group is a methyl group. And we have the same for the pyruvat form, which is a 2-oxo-carboxylate. Uh, In the case of a reaction involving uh, macromolecules like uh, proteins, we summarize the macromolecule to the functional group that is involved in, uh, in the reaction. So for instance, this D-alanine carrier protein in its uh, active form, we uh, has a serine residue that has been modified with a functional group to accept some uh, D-alanine uh, D -alanine residue. So the serine group has been modified with a phosphate group and with a pantothein uh, functional, uh, functional group. On the product side of this reaction, we can see that this part of the molecule has not been uh, modified, but the D-alanine now is attached to the uh, sulfur atom. So this uh, kind of representation allows us to be sure that the reaction involving macromolecules are chemically balanced. As I told you, in some cases, 12% uh, uh, of the EC number, it's not possible to link them to, to rare reaction. So in that case, the information in uh, Uniprot, for instance, will be still represented by, by text. The enzyme classification is uh, one of the uh, few resources that has a uh, linear growth, like uh, REA, for instance. All the, a lot of uh, resources today, biological uh, data resources, have an exponential growth. We have a linear growth, but we have to know that knowledge evolves uh, over time. So here you can see that this is the status of the number of EC number per class. But we can see that some EC number have been transferred to other EC number, or some EC number have been uh, deleted. So it's very important to have uh, this information up to date. So in the group, the enzyme uh, resource is up to date with uh, the NCIUBMB recommendation, but it is synchronized with Uniprot and REA release. In that way, we ensure that all the data are uh, consistent and it's a way, for instance, to have broken link because uh, an EC has been transferred to, to another EC or has been, uh, has been deleted. 
So that's all for the enzyme classification. Now let's go to, to Rhea, take a tour. So what is Rhea? Rhea is an expert curated knowledge badge of chemical and transport reaction of uh, biological interest. Rhea is built on, uh, on KB. So all the reactions are chemically balanced for mass and charge. Rhea is non-redundant. It is evidenced by literature citation. It covers all organisms. So it, Rhea is organism agnostic. It's uh, context independent. So we, uh, we do not provide any information on cellular location, uh, etc. And you will see this afternoon that Rhea is used as a control vocabulary for functional annotation in unit pro KB, gene ontology, and some of our resources like, uh, like Swiss Lipid. But I think I forgot to, to, to mention it's another project of a group which is uh, related to, to lipidomics, so metabolomic for, uh, for lipids. And uh, Rhea is referenced in, uh, in several uh, projects like KB, obviously, but also Reactome, EBI enzyme portals, Metabolite, or metabolic resource like Metanetics, Keg, or, or Metapsych. The scope of, uh, of Rhea is uh, enzyme annotation, genome scale metabolic network, and uh, omics related analysis. All the data are available on a website. I forgot, I can't. Okay, I, have, I can't go back. Anyway, so um, in RIA, the different kinds of reaction we have, we have biochemical reactions. So enzyme, most of our reactions are enzyme catalyzed reaction, but we can also provide spontaneous reaction. So reaction that occurs without any uh, enzyme. And it's important to have this reaction for genome scale metabolic network or omics related uh, analysis to uh, fill the, the gap in, in some pathway, for instance. And we also have transport reaction. So in the case of transport reaction, you can have simple transport reaction or you can have transport reaction coupled to ATP hydrolysis as it is presented in this uh, example. In, uh, in RIA, uh, for the moment, we represent just the, the two um, um, you say, side of, uh, of, the, of the compound that is transported. So this reaction, we use two token out and in, but in fact, we could use uh, side one, side, uh, side two. And in the future, we will try to, to replace this uh, very rudimentary uh, token by something a little bit more, more explicit. But it just says that a molecule is transported from one side to, uh, another, to another side. And transport reactions are the only case where the same compound is present in the two parts of the reaction. So Rhea um, is available in a website, which is uh, with a URL provided here. So rhea-db.org. So all the data in, uh, in Rhea provided in, in Rhea are freely available. We use the license CC, CC by four. Recently, we changed, uh, we updated uh, the website. We have now a, a new and very, uh, Nice, uh, nice website that is designed by uh, by Parit Bonzal, present in this uh, in this training, and uh, this has been described in a recent publication in the last NAR database issue. So just to show you, I won't go in the, in the detail, but behind this website, we have a very uh, complex uh, architecture to maintain, the, to maintain the data. And a lot of people are behind all these uh, nice, uh, nice tools to help us, the curator, to, to, to manage the, the data. So Nicole Redaski is the, the head of uh, this group. And uh, Parit, as I told you, is part of uh, Nicole's group and was in charge of developing the, the website. So here we are in the uh, homepage of uh, the RIA website. So what you can see in this uh, homepage at the top is uh, the information on the current release because RIA is published in synchronization with Uni Uniprot release. So we have uh, four to six uh, releases per, per year. And you have some basic statistics. So we can see that in this uh, current uh, release, 
we have about 13,900 uh, reactions that involve 12,000 uh, compounds. And these reactions have been evidenced by uh, 15, uh, more than 15 uh, unique, uh, unique publications. If you want more detail on, stati uh, on statistics and on the news, you can click to, to, to this link. And uh, if you click on the icon, the real the rea logo, then you will go back to this. Uh, you will go back to this uh, homepage. So let's start to see what is the content of Rhea. So you just click on this browser button and you will get a table with all uh, reactions that are available in, uh, in Rhea. So this is, this is the table. To help you to browse and navigate among the data, we provide filtering uh, results. So you can filter by the kind of reaction, for instance, a reaction involving proteins or nucleic acid. Uh, access directly the transport reaction. And we also uh, provide filtering for enzyme classification. This is what I uh, showed you uh, before, where you can access for each class of uh, the uh, enzyme classification, each main class, the corresponding reaction. And you can see that 38% of the rare reaction are not yet uh, classified. So, here it's an example of a, a reaction page. So you are here, a, a reaction page. To help you to, to navigate, we provide a navigation uh, menu on the left that help you to, to go directly to, to, to one section. So uh, all the sections present in a reaction uh, page are the reaction information, the reaction participant, the cross-reference, the related uh, reaction, the publication and the comment. I have a little uh, problem. I... Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I am confused, but my... Uh... Okay. My computer was a uh, freeze. Excuse, sorry. So here we go in the reaction information section where you have the structural representation of the reaction. Uh, at the top of this page, we have a small uh, icon that allows you to copy the text of the chemical re uh, reaction in the clipboard. So we do not present the, this text, but if you need it, to copy paste in the document, you click on this document, it's on the, the buffer and you can uh, use it in your, in your document. There is another icon that allows you to download this reaction in RxNRD format, which are a chemoinformatic format, and I will come back later to, 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 this, uh, to this format. But just to show you that for each reaction, you can download the, the data in different uh, format. If you mouse over the participant of a rare reaction, here the, this ammonium group, so uh, you will have a tooltip, this black tooltip, that allow you to navigate in the different uh, in different resources. So you can search chemical reaction in RIA for this specific molecule, the selected molecule. You can search RIA for molecules that contains or resemble to, to, to this structure. So you have a link to uh, the uh, structural search. We will, I will show you in detail uh, later. You, we provide some links to the KB uh, website, or uh, you can retrieve all the protein in Uniprot KB that uh, are uh, using this, uh, that are annotated with uh, this, uh, this molecule. In the reaction section, we also provide a summary of the enzyme annotation. So we, this work is not done by uh, RIA biocurator, it's done by other curators, but we provide this summary. So you can have information in Uniprot KB, in the enzyme classification, or in the Go molecular function. And we provide links to uh, the different uh, resources as for the, the chemicals. 
The second section is the reaction participant section. So you can show or hide these sections. And once again, if you mouse over the, this link, you, you can have some tool tips in order to help you to, to, to navigate. And we also provide for each component some uh, structural information that we will see uh, later how we can use it. We provide cross-reference to uh, other resource, so enzyme resource, but also uh, some um, other metabolic resource like keg metacyte, kekosyc reactome, and uh, MCSA. So here uh, in this table, uh, you have four colons. It's because REA is organized as a quartet of uh, direction, let's say. So when you search in the... Um, when you perform some search, you will also return the identifier of, of the unspecified uh, direction. So for, for this reaction, that means we ensure that the two reaction parts are uh, equilibrium, equilibrated, but there is no information. The direction of the reaction is not specified. Whereas in this uh, ID, with this ID, it identifies that the reaction go from the left to the right. We have also an ID that allows to describe the reaction that goes to the right, to the left. So here we have a semantic associated to the reaction side. So here, this right reaction side is uh, correspond to the substrate and this left reaction side correspond to, to the product. And we have also uh, bidirectional uh, reaction when uh, the reaction goes in the different, uh, goes in the different direction. Why we need that? It was to be able to, to link to all the resource and to have a precise link between, uh, between the resource. So in the undefined, with the undefined direction, you can find links to Uniprod KB, EC number, because by definition, EC numbers do not uh, give inf uh, do, do not give uh, any information about the direction of uh, the reaction. So all these numbers are always linked to the uh, undefined direction. It's the same for gene ontology, the molecular, uh, molecular function. The keg reaction are always bidirectional reaction. But in uh, metacyc and ecocyc, you can find the four possible directions. So they provide some unspecified direction, left to right, right to left, or bidirectional. Uh, reactome is mainly left to right or right to left, and maybe in the future we will provide links to 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 reactome uh, on the undefined direction just for the transport reaction. But this is something uh, that is not uh, not sure. So for the moment, consider that reactome has only uh, two direction and MCSA which is a resource developed at EBI and describe the mechanism of the uh, enzymatic reaction, we, are, we provide links to left to right or right to left. The cross-reference to other metabolic uh, resource have several origins. So some of them are created by uh, real biocurators, so KB, KEG, and, and Metacyc. For reactome, uh, it's, uh, the links to reactome are computed based on KB. So reactome is using uh, KB, like REA. Sometimes it's not exactly the, the, the same KB. We, 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 will see, uh, we will see later. But based on, on this KB, we, uh, our developer, have set a procedure that allows to retrieve the corresponding REA reaction. And then we can link REA to reactome uh, reaction. And as I told you before, enzyme uh, uniprot, enzyme sequence, and gene ontology are performed by the curators of this, uh, of this resource. Maybe just a word uh, on, uh, on gene ontology and reactome, because uh, you will see that uniprot, uh, Swiss prot group, is a member of the uniprot uh, consortium. So REA and UNIPROT curators are um, working uh, very close, uh, close together. But we are trying with other um, colleagues, other uh, groups, to unify the, the function uh, descriptors. And uh, now gene ontology and reactome are also using REA as a controlled vocabulary to describe their uh, annotation on, uh, on enzyme. 
So the REA to go mapping is performed by the by the Go uh, consortium. They started uh, less than, than two years ago, so it's it's ongoing. But we are closely uh, working together, and it allows really to to have a, a unified way to to represent uh, enzyme uh, enzyme function. So now we go back to our uh, reaction page and we see the next session, which is related reaction. So you remember our example. So you have the well, you have the reaction. So in this section, it presents the more general form of uh, this uh, reaction, which is represented here. So we have a reaction that involves a monocarboxylic uh, acid and a, a monocarboxylate. And if you go in this section, you will have a new section that is related reaction and that presents the specific form of this, uh, this reaction. So that helps you to navigate between the different reactions. So if you have a reaction, you can go very the parent and what are the other form of this uh, reaction. It allows you to, to find similar, similar reactions. Uh, in the publication section, so we provide the, the title, the, the authors, and the link, a link to, uh, to PubMed and Euro PMC. And if the publication is uh, cited with uh, over, uh, is used by over reaction, uh, we provide a link with this tool. We can see that this publication is cited by two other entries. So you have a link that allow you to uh, perform the, the query and retrieve the corresponding uh, entries. So I talk a little bit about uh, React creation. Let me present the, the team. So we are a group of uh, six uh, bio curators to do this, uh, this job, knowing that uh, some of them are also involved in curation in other resources. So Christian is also involved in the curation of uh, enzyme nomenclature and also uh, Uniprod curators. And Lucilla is working on the Swiss lipid resource. So it's, uh, she's our lipid specialist. She's also working on Uniprot uh, annotation. And Elizabeth and uh, Nevila are, um, are working on uh, bioculator of uh, the Uniprot uh, resource. And here are boss Alan Bridge. So REA is built on, on KB. What is the, the job of the bio curators? So it's to read paper, extract the reaction from the paper, and for each reaction participant, identify the compounds in the uh, KB resource. So KB is uh, developed at, uh, at EBI. It's the chemical entity uh, of uh, the biological interest. It's uh, an ontology. So it contains about 60,000 fully annotated chemical entries and also uh, uh, more than uh, 100 chemical, uh, chemical entries that are not fully reviewed by the, by the KB uh, curators. We have a very strong collaboration with uh, KB uh, bio curators. And REA uh, curators are submitting a lot of uh, compounds to KB. So if a compound we need for REA is missing in KB, we can submit this, uh, this compound to KB and uh, sometimes also update some uh, KB uh, entries in order to add, uh, to add missing, uh, missing information. About uh, six, uh, so REA bio curators have submitted about uh, or updated Six uh, six thousand uh, KB uh, KB entry, which is quite a, a big number and correspond to half of the compounds we, we are using in uh, in Rio. I show you the different kind of reaction participants. So all our uh, participants, small molecule, macromolecule, or polymers, are uh, linked to a KB uh, to a KB ID. But in the case of macromolecule and polymer, we will have uh, an additional identifier to represent this uh, the macromolecule. So here is an example of uh, l lysyl uh, protein. So this protein, we just use the lysine residue to, to represent the, the molecule. Same thing for the, the tyrene. And you can see that here we have this uh, star that represents demi-atom that are the attachment point to, to, the, 
larger macro macromolecule. And for the polymer, we also have uh, an additional layer if we need to uh, have a different polymerization index. So a polymer is a molecule with a constant part, very reduced in this case, and a, a repeated part. So for this uh, repeated unit, you have a polymerization index that is N in, in KB, but sometimes in polymerization index, we need, we need to have N plus one, N plus two, et cetera. So, we have an additional uh, identifier for these uh, molecules. So let's see a little bit more in detail what we have in, uh, in KB and what we are using. So this is a typical entry page for uh, a, KB, uh, a KB compound. So what we use is the KB ID, the identifier, but we use also the, the structure. So here, you have the 2D, the display of the 2D structure. These come from the MOL, MOL file. So a MOL file is a chemoinformatic format, uh, is used in chemoinformatics. So in this uh, format, you have several sections, a header, a count line, a section that describes the atom block. So you have the coordinates to, uh, this, that correspond to, to, to this, uh, this display. We are in 2D, so the third, uh, so it's X, Y, Z, but Z is zero because we represent only uh, 2D structure. And this uh, last column represents the, the atom. Then you have a section that describes the block, and you can have several sections that, in this case, for instance, describe uh, the property block to describe the global charge of this, uh, of this molecule. We also use information uh, from KB for the formula and the net charge of uh, the molecule, as well, as well as other way to encode the structure of uh, the molecule. So the international, uh, we can use SMILES uh, and uh, INCHI. So here it's an example with another molecule. It's aldehyde deglucose 6-phosphate. You have the 2D structure of this molecule. And from this structure, we can compute canonical smiles. So you see in green the same color here in this, uh, in this string. There are also isomeric smiles if you want to take into account the stereochemistry of, uh, of this, uh, this atom. Uh, these, uh, the smiles are not unique, uh, so this string it depends on the way you uh, go through the, the molecule. So you can have a lot of valid smiles, but they are not unique. You can't use them uh, as an identifier. This is why the UPAC, the international chemical, uh, an international uh, nomenclature committee for, for chemistry, so they design INCHI, what we call INCHI, International Chemical Identifier. So it's another way to present uh, this structural information encoded in a string, but it's uh, in this case, it's, uh, it's unique. From KB, we also use the names and the synonyms. Inside uh, KB, you can see one uh, of this uh, synonym is uh, of specific interest uh, for us. So you can see there's a uh, there's synonym in KB with the source uniprot. So these synonym correspond to what we call uh, uniprot name. Very often uh, we, we can talk about uniprot name. So it's the KB synonym that is used by REA or uniprot to label reaction participant, but you will see with my Claude Italo also to label cofactors or modified residue and, uh, and ligands. So we have this specific synonym because in this way, uh, KB can change their KB common name if they want, and there, are no, there is no impact, no consequences to the chemical uh, reaction and uh, to, to the use of uh, the cofactor in Uniprot, for, for instance. So we can, we can manage the, the name. KB is uh, an ontology, so that means it represents concept, but also relation between this, uh, this concept. So here you have an example of the uh, relationship that you can find in, in, in KB. So they have some typical uh, relationship that we can find in, 
in all uh, resources like either or as part uh, relationship. Here with the triangle, it's either relationship. So that means uh, D-alanine is a D-alpha uh, amino acid, is a non-proteogenic alpha amino acid, is a alpha amino acid, etc. But the particularity of KB is also that they have some dedicated uh, relationship for chemistry. And another particularity of KB is that they identify uh, the different uh, form of the same molecule according to, to the pH. Uh, the same molecule can, according to the pH, can exist in different in different form, and KB identifies all these forms and provide some relationship between the compounds. So for example, D-alanine, you can have some uh, relationship to D-alanate or D-alanium. So they represent the same molecule, D-alanine, but in different, uh, in different form. In, uh, in RIA and Metapsych, we will use uh, a specific, uh, specific form of this molecule that correspond to the major macrospecies at, uh, at pH 7.3. Whereas, for instance, KEG is using a fully uh, hydrogenated molecule, so not, not charged, uncharged. And uh, we prefer to, to use charged molecule because it uh, helps us to uh, balance the reaction for mass and, uh, and charge. So most molecules uh, contain some specific functional groups, like uh, likely to lose or gain a proton under specific uh, circumstances, like uh, pH or, or temperature. So in our D-alanine example, there are two such a group. You have an amino group here, and you have a carboxylic uh, acid group uh, here. So each equilibrium between protonated and deprotonated forms of the molecule can be described with a constant value that is called a pKa. And based on this uh, pKa, we can uh, compute the major microspecies at uh, a, given, uh, a given pH. So we use the Kemaxon uh, software to perform, uh, to perform this, uh, this calculation. And if you use one, all the KB uh, structure that uh, identify the alanine and that you do this computation, major microspecies at pH 7.3, you will always retrieve this, uh, this KB ID that is the D alanine uh, sweet zero. So this is very useful to be sure that uh, Rhea is non-redundant because if one uh, Reactivator choose one uh, form and the other another form. We could have the same reaction, but for different pH. So all our reactions are uh, balanced for pH 7, 7.3. We do, uh, we set up, enfin, our developer set up a procedure to uh, do this calculation for the whole uh, KB, uh, KB data set. This is very useful for Ray and Uniprod, but also for gene ontology and, and reactome. And we provide this, uh, this mapping in different, in different format. What is important to, to remember is that you don't have to manage with the pH, uh, major microspecies at pH 7.3 things. We do that for you. So if you search RIA you, or Uniprod using one of the SKB, automatically the application will return the KBID that we use in, uh, in RIA and Uniprot. And we do the job uh, for you. And this, uh, this um, using this um, molecule at pH 7.3, as I told you, allow you to be sure that our reactions are non-redundant and chemically balanced for mass and charge. Chemically balanced for mass and charge means that the sum of the formula of uh, participants on each uh, side are identical and the same thing for the charge. Okay, now let's go uh, to the next uh, point. That is, okay, we have seen the content of RIA, how we can search RIA. So if you are new by in a uh, if you don't know where, you can click on the example provided on the website and it will give you an idea 
of the different um, way to query the resource. So you can search by name, you can search by identifier. We are KB, EC number. We will see that we can search by inchi key, by, uh, by structure. And you, you can search also on the cross-reference that are provided in, uh, in the resource. We have uh, uh, developed some uh, tutorial. We have made some, uh, some tutorials. So uh, I will show you one of these tutorials. So how to search for reaction involving specific compounds in. Uh... Thank you. In this tutorial, we will learn how to search for RIA reactions involving specific chemical compounds. RIA uses the KB Dictionary of Small Molecules to describe reaction participants. This allows to search RIA, taking into account the synonyms, the charge, and hierarchical classification of chemical compounds. For a start, let's do a simple text search for palmitate. Here are the reactions we obtain. However, as we can see, many of these reactions do not seem to contain the actual word palmitate. We will start to explore our results and understand the relationships of these reactions with palmitate by clicking on choose molecule for palmitate. We see that palmitate is found in the name or synonyms of several molecules or classes of molecules. For example, the first two results, hexadecanoate and hexadecanoic acid, have palmitate as one of their synonyms and participate in the same number of reactions. Let's see the reactions for hexadecanoate, and we clearly see that our molecule participates in these reactions. If we do the same for the molecule hexadecanoic acid, we see that it does not directly appear as a reaction participant in RIA. To understand this, we need to explain a convention used in RIA. KEBI handles all forms of a given chemical compound, for example, neutral versus charged, fully versus partially protonated. Each form has its own unique KEBI identifier and related forms are linked together. RIA, in order to provide non-redundant and chemically balanced reactions, uses those KEBI entities that describe the form that is the major microspecies at pH 7.3. Hexadecanoate, but not hexadecanoic acid, is used as a reaction participant at pH 7.3. You can find out more about these concepts in our help pages. If we want to exclude cases like the one just explained, we can click this checkbox. Only a subset of the previously identified cabbies are reaction participants. Note that hexadecanoic acid has now disappeared from this list. We go back to browsing the rear reactions that have hexadecanoate as a reaction participant. We can click on this link here. We see that the query box is now filled with a query that includes the KEBI identifier of hexadecanoate. We could have done the same query by using the advanced search. To do so, we click on advanced search, then on all. We select reaction participants and KEBI small molecule and start writing palmitate. Once again, don't be surprised if many different names are proposed that at a first glance do not contain the word palmitate. It's just that the query is performed among all names, including synonyms and differently charged versions reported in KEBI. By selecting hexadecanoate and clicking on search, we retrieve the same reactions as before. In the reaction table, if we want additional information on our molecule, we can click on hexadecanoate black tooltip appears. We can select to see the description of this molecule in KEBI. A lot of information is available about our molecule on this KEBI page, including a list of hierarchical relationships with other molecules. For example, we can see that hexadecanoate is a long chain fatty acid anion. We can now search for reactions with this KEBI identifier. And to do this, we go back to the RIA homepage, paste this KEBI ID into the simple query box. We get a significant number of RIA reactions in our result page. We can see that some of the results still display reactions involving hexadecanoate, 
which is expected because it is a child of long-chain fatty acid anion. This result nicely illustrates the fact that the default search in RIA is a hierarchical search. If we search by reaction participant with a KB ID, we will retrieve all the RIA reactions that involve this KB molecule or one of its children. It is of course possible to retrieve the RIA reaction in which long chain fatty acid anion is mentioned as a reaction participant. To do this, let's use the advanced search. Enter the KB ID we used previously and click on exact KB search. By selecting this option, the list of matching reaction becomes a lot shorter and we can see that the query form was changed and it now shows the prefix KB exact. These reactions involve as a reaction participant, the class of compounds, which is labeled in KEBI as long chain fatty acid anion and in RIA with the synonymous term a long chain fatty acid. All the numbers shown in this tutorial will, of course, change regularly depending on the. Okay, so thank you, Elizabeth and my group that did this, uh, this video. I uh, break it because. Uh, it's uh, just uh, some uh, warning about the, the content. I, I will come back. Uh, I will come back later. So we have seen in this video the RIA uh, advanced search. We use um, how to use the RIA advanced search. So just to, to, to show you some additional information. So here you have the complete list of the fields that are available for, for, for query. And also remember that uh, you have some, you can have some Boolean operator in order to perform some uh, some complex uh, query. So, for example, let's say that I would like to retrieve all reaction annotated in Uniput KB that involve uh, lipids. So, a children of uh, KB one eight zero five nine, which is the the KB for the class of uh, of lipids. And I am interested only by uh, oxidoreductases uh, enzyme, and I would like to have a uh, reaction that have a mapping to the go and and reactome. So here it's how you set up this query in the uh, advanced uh, search. And if you are uh, if it's uh, okay uh, for you and you are uh, aware how to search, you can also use the simple search and to perform the, the query. Uh, the two queries are absolutely uh, identical. And as it was mentioned in, uh, in the video, we have performed hierarchical search by, by default, but this search can be limited using exact uh, search. So we see the example with uh, KB, you have exactly the same uh, behavior with uh, gene ontology. So in gene ontology, in molecular function, you have a hierarchy. And if you search by parent terms, you can retrieve all the different terms that are mapped to, to, to a reaction. But if you want to search for uh, an exact uh, term, you can uh, you filter this uh, exact search uh, box. OK, so let's say that we have a bunch of, uh, of molecules from uh, one uh, experiment, how do I find reaction corresponding to this uh, molecule? So you just have to enter your list of, uh, of KB with the R uh, Boolean and click on the search uh, button and you will get the result uh, list. So the list of reaction that involve one of these uh, compounds. If you click on this uh, customize uh, icon, you can change the display of the table. So for, for example, if you are more in, not interested by enzyme data, but you would like to see the KB name and the KB identifier, you can change, customize the display of your table. You select, you select your fields of interest, click on save, and you get this, uh, this new uh, display where we have two uh, new colons. So we have removed two colons and added a new, new ones where you can have the name of the chemicals and its uh, KB identifier. At the top of the table, you have other uh, icons 
possibility. So if you click on the find enzyme uh, button, you can uh, retrieve in uh, Uniprot the set of uh, enzymes that are catalyzing the selection of a reaction. You can download this table result in a table. And you can also bookmark the URL if you want to share it with, uh, to use it later or share it with, uh, with colleagues. Um, it's interesting to do this simple search, but uh, it doesn't scale very well as the number of uh, KB uh, increase. So in that case, it's better to use the retrieve ID mapping functionality. So you can retrieve BRA reaction with different uh, identifier types. So you can have ID from reaction. So you have a set of uh, rare ID or you have a metacyte keg uh, rectum uh, reaction IDs, or you can search rare by uh, KB, KB exact and in cheeky. We will see in cheeky later, or you can search uh, RIA with a set of EC number or uh, gene ontology go uh, identifiers. So you just have to fill the text box with your list of uh, with IDs, or you can upload a file, a file with uh, the list of your identifiers and you click on the submit button. So in this case, you will have a, a table, but compared to the other search, you will have with ID mapping an additional uh, column that correspond, uh, in this case, it was a, an ID mapping with KB ID. So you have your query and in parentheses, you uh, have, uh, we provide the uh, KB ID that is uh, exactly used in the reaction. So it's particularly important in case of uh, is mapping or in case of major uh, microspecies uh, protonation state uh, mapping between uh, your query and the, the result. These uh, search are available uh, by uh, programmatic uh, access. So we have for the bioinformatician, we, we, we have a REST API that allows to programmatically access uh, the, the data. Here it's an example of a query. The results are provided as um, uh, in tab separated uh, format, but you can, uh, you can change the, the formats. It's an example in Python, but you have also uh, other language available like uh, JavaScript or Java. And uh, you can also uh, specify the columns you would like to see in the, the result uh, table. So in case you, you have so, so some questions, do not hesitate to, to contact uh, Parit who developed this programmatic access functionalities. Now let's say that we have a bunch of chemical structure, but no uh, KB identifiers. So how do I find this reaction? So in that case, you, if you provide your chemical structure as a set of inch keys, you will be able to uh, retrieve the corresponding reaction. So now let me show you the second video that uh, Marie-Claude and Elisabeth has prepared to show you how you can retrieve a reaction using chemical structure encoded in inch key. Welcome to this tutorial where we will learn how to search for real reactions using the chemical structure information encoded by an inchi key. An inchi key is a computer readable representation of the structure of a chemical compound. It is derived from the International Chemical Identifier or inchi standard, a textual representation that describes a molecule in terms of different layers of information. Formula atom connection, hydrogen position, and charge. The condensed inchi key is a hashed version of the full inchi, which is designed for easy web and database searches of chemical compounds. An inchi key is composed of 27 characters organized in three blocks. The first block encodes information about the molecular skeleton and atom connectivity. The second, information about the stereochemistry. And the third block, information about the charge of the molecule. This representation of the chemical structure of molecules is mainly used in programmatic access. However, 
The RIA website supports searches for RIA reaction participants by complete or partial in Chiki using the simple and advanced search and the retrieve ID mapping service interactively as well as programmatically. Let's look for RIA reactions involving aldehyde D glucose 6 phosphate, which is represented by this inchi key. We copy paste this inchi key in the simple search box using the prefix inchi key colon. It returns three RIA reactions. Note that the URL of the result page contains the inchi key and can be bookmarked. We could have done the same type of query using the advanced search. To do this, we click on advanced search, click on all, select inchi key, and copy paste our inchi key. We can also query RIA with a partial inchi key, omitting the second or third block. Information on the charge of our molecule is encoded in the third block of the inchi key. If we query with the third part omitted, we get the same three reactions as before. The reason is that the RIA search engine bypasses the charge constraints and always returns the RIA reaction with the KEBI compounds that correspond to the major microspecies at pH 7.3. This concept is explained in more detail in the guided tour to RIA's key features and web interface, which is linked below. Queries with or without the third part of an inchi key, will therefore always return the same results. If the stereochemistry of our molecule is not relevant for our search, we can search RIA using only the first part of the inchi key. Now we get six RIA reactions. We can see that these RIA reactions share a reaction participant which has a common molecular skeleton. If we want to have additional information on the inchi key, and the corresponding molecules, we can click on a RIA reaction. The information is found in the reaction participant section. When working with inchi keys, it is more convenient to use the retrieve ID mapping service, which has additional useful functionalities for this use case. We click on the retrieve ID mapping link, select the identifier type inchi key, copy paste our list into the box and click on submit. The result table contains a column with the queried inchi keys and, what is interesting, the corresponding KEBI identifiers. The search engine performs an exact search. It does not take into account the is a relationships found in KEBI. We can observe that our two inchi keys correspond to two small molecules which participate in two RIA reactions. If the stereochemistry of our molecule is not important, we could have used a partial inchi key. All the results show. Okay, so uh, as a summary here, where well, you have uh, four type of uh, reaction uh, reaction participants, so search by inchi key will be only uh, available for uh, fully defined uh, small uh, small molecules. So all reaction involving this, this molecule, uh, for, for this molecule, it's not uh, it's not possible. I think you you understand that. Uh, let's quickly go to the substructure uh, similarity search. Time is uh, is going uh, quick. So if you click on this uh, on this link, you can access to the structure similarity search of uh, of RIA. So it's powered by uh, IDSM. IDSM, it's a Czech, a Czech group. It's part of the Elixir Czech, Czech node. And they have developed a, a cartridge in order to, to be able to perform substructure and similarity search on the small molecules. So I just give you some pointer if you are interested to, to the detail, but we have no time to, to do it this, this afternoon. So it's based on the Sparkle uh, technology that we will see at the end of the afternoon. So if uh, you click on this uh, structure uh, search, uh, you have a new uh, kind of, uh, of function as uh, shown in this uh, 
smile. You can enter a structure either by a smile, you can draw the molecule with this sketcher, or you can upload some, uh, some mole molecule using some mole file using this uh, functionality. So let's say that we want to perform a substructure search. So we select the search type, the search structure, and the result will be a list of uh, KB that are uh, used in uh, used in in RIA. So if you click on this link, you are provided to the search result corresponding to to the KB uh, selected. Uh, you can access to, to this uh, search, uh, structural search page uh, from the RIA homepage when I uh, show you at the beginning. So if you click on find molecule that contents or resemble this structure, this form is automatically uh, filled with uh, the data you, you selected. And for instance, if we want to perform a similarity search, we select this, uh, this option. And once again, you will get uh, several uh, KB that, uh, depending on your query, of course, you will get the, the resulting KB that fit uh, your, your, your query. So uh, play with the different parameters in order to, to refine your, your search. So quickly, the RIA export in terms of availability. So, these uh, exports are available on the download uh, page where we have three uh, sections, re reaction, reaction participant, and uh, cross uh, references. So the uh, data concerning the reaction, we have several formats, semantic web format. I will uh, come back uh, at the end of the afternoon. We have also some uh, chemo informatic uh, format or tab separated uh, format. So. As I told you, it will, it will be uh, later. And for the Ericsson, uh, Ericsson and RD format, so Ericsson format is, I show you the MOL file, Ericsson format is just for a reaction. It's the concatenation of the participants uh, involved in the molecule. So it uh, allows to, uh, it can be used by uh, chemoinformatic uh, software. And RD format, it's the same as Ericsson, but with additional, uh, additional data. So from a reaction page, if you select, for instance, download in Ericsson format, you get this information in a new tab that you can uh, save. And you can save the file or you can copy paste in, in browser and you can display the content, uh, the real reaction in some of our chemoinformatic tools. Here, it's an example of a tab separated uh, format for the direction, for the relationship uh, between the real reaction and also uh, important for real obsolete uh, ID because uh, like I show you for on-time classification, we also have some uh, reaction that we consider obsolete in the time. So they are no more publicly available, but the list of ID is important. For the reaction participant, we have chemoinformatics uh, with the MOL and SDF. We have tab separated. So here it's uh, the KB PH7.3 mapping.tsv file that is important if you want to map any KB to the uh, normalized form used in uh, used in uh, in RIA. And uh, in semantic, we have an export of KB that is called KB, KB all. And just to uh, warn you that uh, this KB all can is different from the KB all provided on the KB uh, KB website because it corresponds to the set of data that are synchronized with Uniprot and RIA, and it contains additional information uh, that are used uh, by Uniprot and RIA, like uh, a dedicated predicate for the major microspecies at pH 7.3, and also the name, the synonym with source in Uniprot that is uh, very useful for in our case. And we also uh, provide uh, some uh, tab delimited file for the cross uh, reference. So here you have two examples, one uh, the links between uh, RIA and EC numbers or the links between RIA and, uh, and Uniprot. 
for the keg uh, user so they are not advertised on the on the download page but they are available on the ftp site we provide some uh, distribution and export of our data in the in the keg uh, format so that means that if you have some software to process keg data you can uh, upload the uh, real data in this uh, in this format so to finish in terms of uh, comparison of the different metabolic uh, resources so you can say that there are three main resource uh, main reaction resource metacyc rea and uh, and keg so we, we have near far nearly the same number of of reactions so in terms of compounds so uh, 12000 is the number of uh, compounds that are effectively used in a rea, uh, as rea reaction uh, participant. But uh, as I show you, uh, you can screen the, lot, uh, the, the full uh, KB uh, database. So you can search for any, uh, any KB ID. You can have answer or no answer, but you can search for, uh, for the full, uh, full data set. For the uh, enzyme, so it will be the next presentation uh, from uh, Marie Claude that will explain in Uniprot. And uh, KEG has no release, uh, whereas uh, Metasite has four. And for us, it's uh, between four and, uh, and six. And uh, compared to the other, we are freely available. You don't need any subscription to, to access, the, to access the, the data. Um, we uh, don't hesitate to contact us to help improving our resource for your for your community so please click on this feedback form and if something you don't understand or something is missing or don't hesitate to to contact to, to contact us and i show you some some, some video uh, during this uh, this presentation and they are all available on the home page you have some uh, some link to access this, uh, this youtube uh, video Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be with you for the second part of this uh, SIP training course. So this second part will focus on the enzyme sequences and more particularly on the, all the information which can be found in, uh, in the database Uniprot KB. So as for the first part, please do not hesitate to ask your question in the, in the Google Doc. So we will see that the type relationships between REA, KB, and uh, UNIPROT allow to uh, have a lot of information on the enzyme. And this is what I will try to share with you just now. So in this part, I will first give a short introduction and overview, and then I will focus on UNIPROT. As you may know, uh, Uniprot KB is composed of two sections, one, one section SwissProt, which is manually annotated and reviewed, and another section which is called Tremble, which is automatically annotated and not reviewed. And uh, I will go in detail for both sections to explain where the protein sequences come from and where the functional annotation come from. And at the end, I will try to give some examples of query you can do uh, using the REA and KB uh, information in the Uniprot website. So first, a brief introduction. So before the biochemical reactions in uh, Uniprot KB were annotated using the IUBMB enzyme classification. So according to the EC number, and now we use RIA and the, the RIA and KB identifier and the EC number to annotate the same uh, reaction. So it means that instead of having a chemical name, you have now the chemical identifier. So the KB identifier, the RIA identifier, and the EC number to describe a biochemical reaction in Uniprot. And according to the information which is stored in KB, you can have access to the 2D structure and uh, the classical representation of an enzyme reaction. Uh, more in detail, this was the first way of annotating enzyme reaction in uh, Uniprot in the first version of this entry here. And now if you look at the latest version, you see that the reaction is annotated according to the KB identifier, the RIA identifier, and the EC 
uh, number as well. You also have information on the source of the information, so a link to the PubMed ID, and also a link to uh, the information if you have an, an information on the direction of the, of the reaction. If you want to have additional information on this integration process, do not hesitate to go back to the headline here, published in 2018, or to our paper, which explained this, uh, this process. So as an overview, it's just to try to sum up what I'm saying in the first part. So all small molecules are, um, uh, you, which are participating in an enzyme reaction are now named according to the vocabulary and ontology found in KB. And uh, as Anne mentioned, uh, we use in Rhea and Uniprot only the, ma the major microspecies at pH 7.3. So the rare reaction, the biochemical reaction, and the transport reaction are now integrated into Uniprot together with the enzyme classification, the EC number. And thanks to this integration, now you have access to the biochemical reaction, you have access to the protein sequence, you have access to other information such as the subcellular location, genetic disease, taxonomy, 3D structure related to the enzyme. So the close links between Rhea, KB, and Uniprot allow to access to a wealth of information on each uh, enzyme. And this type of integration allow to ask questions such as how many human enzymes are associated with a genetic disease? Or more precisely, how many human enzymes involving, for example, dopamine are associated with a genetic disease? We're going to see this type of query at the end of this uh, of my of my talk. So this is the Uniprot website uh, homepage. Uh, Uniprot is uh, maintained by the Uniprot Consortium, which is um, uh, composed of the EMBL EBI in the UK, the Protein Information Resource in the US, and the Sieb Institute of Bioinformatics in Switzerland. So altogether, there are about 110 collaborators working on this uh, resource. And I'm quite sorry about that, but there will be a new uh, website on Uniprot by the end of the year, but the website is not yet enough finalized. Uh, so we decide to keep the uh, previous version of the website for this course and also for the training, which will take place uh, next week. But, but, but we need your help. So please do not hesitate to have a look at the new beta website to send us your feedback because we need users to participate in new functionality testing and so on. So do not hesitate to send feedback. It's very helpful for us. And especially when there will be a new website. So Uniprot, as you may already know, uh, provides several resources. Um, for example, uh, Unipark, which is a database of, uh, 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 of uh, all the protein sequences that have once existed on, on Earth. Uh, it contains only sequences uh, and taxonomy and accession number, but you have no uh, annotation in these databases. I will not go further in detail. If you have any question, do not hesitate to ask. We also provide the UNIREF, which is the database of sequence clusters of uh, 190 or 50% identical sequences. And something maybe more important biologically here, is the proteome, so the protein set which are expressed by an, a given organism which, for which we have a complete genome sequence available. I will give you more info later on uh, this protein, uh, a proteome uh, database. But now I will focus on uh, the Uniprot knowledge base and on these two sections, so Swissprot uh, and Tremble. First of all, uh, a few number and statistics on the number of records. So in Swissprot, there are half a million of records which have been carefully selected. Most of the time we annotate uh, the model organism or we annotate uh, a protein according to user requests. 
And this is, uh, these half of million of entries are very important because they are used to create uh, automated annot annotation rules, which will be uh, uh, used for the annotation of the Tremble uh, section of Uniport. So you see in uh, Tremble, we have uh, 225 millions of reports. But again, uh, beware the statistics from the number of records because they are not really uh, easily comparable because the redundancy is not at the same level. In Swissprot, you have one record for one gene for a given species. In uh, Tremble, you have one record for one protein for one species. So if you look at the number of protein sequences, you have more protein sequences in Swissprot compared to the number of records but you have the same number of protein sequences compared to the number of, number of records in Tremble. But just for information, the, in Tremble, the redundancy is, uh, is low because 100% identical protein sequence are merged together. Then the source of annotation. Uh, in SwissProt, it's mainly publication. And in Tremble, it's automated annotation rules either rules which are manually generated or rules which have been automatically generated according to the um, content of Swiss Prot entries. And now if we focus on, uh, on Zyme records, about half of the Swiss Prot records concern on, on Zymes and about 16% of the Tremble uh, records are linked to a non-zyme and non-biochemical uh, reaction. So today, just to explain the difference between SwissProt and Tremble, we're going to focus on a given gene uh, from, uh, from a human and on this specific uh, real reaction. So this real reaction is involved in the sphingolipid metabolism. So you have a description here of all the molecules uh, involved in, in this reaction. And the question is what type of additional information is available in Uniprot and what will be the difference between the SwissProt and the Tremble records. So first of all, if you do a query with the gene name and organism, a human, you will see that you get six different records which have the same gene name and which are all coming from human. In fact, this is a redundancy which is uh, always uh, present between SwissProt and Tremble because given the, the manual curation effort and the increasing amount of protein sequence data coming from high throughput genomic sequencing project, it's not possible to merge and to ensure non-redundancy at this level. That's why you can find 100% identical sequences for the same species in Uniprot SwissProt and in, uh, in Uniprot SwissProt, yes, and in Uniprot Tremble. So what, we, what I want to show you now is just the difference between the content of the entry, which has been manually annotated by the expert bio curator, so those the SwissProt one and the Tremble one, which has been annotated using automated annotation rules. So first I will focus on Swiss products and have a look at these entries here. So you know that the entry has been manually reviewed by expert bio curator because there is a statute reviewed here. And this really means that the records have been uh, annotated thanks to the information which has been extracted from literature or also from some computational analysis which had been evaluated by the bio curators. And if you look at the publications which have been used to edit this entry and you click here, you see that there are quite a lot of publications which have been used by the bio curator to annotate, for example, the function of the protein, the subcellular location or disease or post translational modification. And in fact, the reading publication, but the literature triage, triage is even a more big effort, which is done by the bio curators. So we have to read publication, but first we have to select the good publication. 
And uh, it is, we evaluate that curators are um, uh, reading, uh, are evaluate, sorry, that curator evaluates around the 50,000 to 7,000 papers per year just during the course of the curation work for Uniquats, Fishquats. If you want to have additional information on this work of literature triage or uh, the bio curation process, you can look this video here or you can go to the publication which is linked here. So now we're going to go through the different section of the Uniprot entry. Uh, if you have a look at the taxonomy, a uh, name and taxonomy, for example, so this entry, this gene is encoding a protein which has three uh, enzyme reactions, which catalyze three enzyme reactions. You see here three uh, EC number. And you see that the name of the protein can be very different. Uh, there are really uh, quite different protein names. So that's why uh, there is no real consensus on protein name when you look uh, when you look for a given uh, protein, please query the protein with the gene name. There are nomenclature committees for the gene name, so it's much more easy uh, to, to query protein according to the gene name. And also you have information on the taxonomy. So you have the tax ID, for example, and you have uh, information on the proteome. We will talk a little bit more on this later. So first, the protein sequence. Where do the protein sequence come from in Uniprot? Uh, as I said previously, so in Swissprot, you have one record, one gene, which could have several protein, which, which could give rise to several protein sequences, and you have one species. So for these specific genes here, we see that there are five different protein sequences which are produced by this given gene. And if you look carefully, you see that these protein sequences have different lengths and may have different function because the length is not the same. And this is due to the fact that there are some alternative splicing events or alternative, initi alternative initiation events. And that's why from this given gene, you can have uh, five different protein sequences. This is an important information. All the, the positional information in this entry will refer to the canonical sequence. So we choose a canonical sequence, uh, um, uh, a consensus sequence for which is going to be carefully annotated. For example, the position of the post translational modification, the position of the variance will all be referring to this uh, canonical sequence. And if you download one of these records, you can you have the, cho the choice to download only the canonical or the canonical and the isoform sequence. And beware, not all data sets include the isoform sequences. For example, if you do a blast against this product at the NCBI, they do not include the isoform um, sequences. So if we go back to this, uh, to the query we do first, we, you can see that, um, um, so the Swiss protein tree provides five different protein sequence with different lengths. And in fact, in the tremble, um, the different records in tremble correspond to the different isoform which are already uh, annotated in Swiss prot. But as I said before, it's not possible to merge all these uh, data. That's why you may have a tremble entry which contain exactly the same protein sequence as the, uh, put the Swiss prot uh, entry. But what you have to be careful about is if you align all these protein sequence, you see that they are quite different. And uh, for example, this uh, protein is a lysosomal uh, enzyme. And the um, protein are target to lysosome thanks to, the, to a signal peptide, which is localized at the beginning of the protein. So you see on the five protein sequence, only two have this uh, uh, signal sequence. It means that only two of them will be localized in the lysosome. So it means that the information about the protein sequence is very, very important. And when next time you write a publication, please cite the accession number 
and specify, if you can, which protein sequence you're working on to be sure that we can uh, then integrate the, the information in, uh, in Uniquad. There are already some people who, who do a great job and when they talk about enzyme, they just specify the accession number of the, the corresponding accession number in Uniprot. So this is really nice and takes a lot. But the next step will be to uh, give information on the sequence and not only on the gene name and the canonical uh, sequence. So for example, we are now uh, we have added some information on, um, on the related to protein sequence. So we have 18,000 functional annotations which have been linked to isoforms of chains in Swissprot. But this is really the beginning of a big uh, job which is ongoing. And for that, we really need your help. So where does these protein sequences come from? 99% uh, of the protein sequences which are uh, in Uniprot come from the translation of the nucleotide sequence uh, which are found in the public uh, nucleotide sequence databases. So the, the, the International Nucleotide Sequence Databases collaboration which include EMBL, GeneBank and DDBG. So the protein sequence come from the translation of mRNA or from uh, genomic uh, data. And the job in uh, UDPROT is to try to uh, put together all, all these sequences, choose the, the, the best one, and uh, correct the sequence because we want that the protein sequences map to the genome sequence. So sometimes you can see that there are a list of conflicts, which is because the protein sequence, which were the translation of one of these entries, were not mapping the genome sequence. Oftentimes there are even uh, worse problems such as bad gene prediction or things like that. So if we look at the statistic about 15% of the Swiss protein tree required curation effort to correct the protein sequences. And if we focus on human, about 89% of the protein sequence required correlation effort to correct or confirm the sequence of the protein. And when we know the importance of the quality of the sequence for the approach which use now machine learning or uh, uh, in, uh, artificial intelligence to, to, to learn from uh, the language of protein, you can guess that the, the correction of protein sequence is very important. And just to underline, uh, DeepMind, who has done the prediction of 3D structure for all proteins, are based, um, use the, the Uniprot protein sequences to predict the 3D structure of all the proteins. So now this about the source of uh, annotation. Um, so as I already mentioned, we go from publication, we could say on unstructured uh, information to structured data. And this uh, expert curation process is really essential because it's allowed to, uh, to add value to research data and to uh, make the data usable for machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence. But what you have to remember is that most aspects of the bioperation is quite complex and cannot be replaced by machine learning. So here, if you look at the function uh, of, the, of the gene GPA, you see that you have uh, some free text, uh, human readable uh, section here. You have the catalytic section, which is structure, computer and human readable and use control vocabulary, thanks to REA and KB. And you have also then the gene ontology part, which is also a structure and the computer and human readable uh, using control vocabulary section. Uh, just this morning, we received a, a nice email. I want to share that with you. It just said that you somehow succeed in writing short but complete summaries of the most important things we currently know about one protein. It's quite nice to see that some of the user appreciates the content of, uh, of the bio-creation process. So where does it come from? 
this functional annotation. In Swissprat, the major information comes from publication. The, the information comes from by similarity with another species, another part a lot. Or it may come from uh, um, prediction. It may be imported from uh, another databases, or it may come from sequence analysis. So, for example, and sorry, and each time we mention we we mention the source using the evidence and conclusion ontology called ECHO. So, for each of the source, so for example, for PubMed we have an ECHO with this number. For um, Uniprat we have an ECHO with this number, and so on. And if we look at the, the source coming from sequence analysis, such as uh, Fabius, which predict transmembrane, Fabius is one of the programs which is used by the bioperator to analyze and uh, predict, for example, subcellular location, transmembrane domain, protein topology, post translational modification, and also domain identification and pro protein family classification. So all these programs have been validated by the by expert to be used for the bioperation and for, for, of protein sequences in uh, in Uniprot. So Phobius, for example, which is used to predict uh, transmembrane and signal peptide, uh, is used, and the echo will be Phobius. You can see in the, um, in the link, it will be written Phobius. Now, if we go to the publication and look, for example, at this publication here, so you see that this publication here is used uh, for the annotation of the function as a free text, but also for the annotation of the catalytic activity uh, done by Rhea Biocurator. And this is this. Uh, uh, example here, and if we read the text, we just see, okay, this is an enzyme with DCC number, these are the substrate uh, which is used here, and you see that we have, as uh, Anne mentioned before, we have to map this uh, name here with the KB to be sure that we will uh, use the correct control vocabulary. So by using KB, we map this name here to this uh, name here, which is one of the synonyms used in KB. And we can have a KB identifier for each uh, reaction participant. And this is a tight collaboration between Uniprot and Rhea Biocurators. And as I mentioned before, in Uniprot, we use one given name for a chemical a biochemical uh, entity but there are other names which can be used by KB. If you want to have more information on the bio, on the chemical uh, uh, compound here, you can go and uh, open the, the tooltips here and go to the description which is provided by KB. The same thing, if you look at this reaction here, you can have additional information and click on Rhea to see all the, the, the biochemical reaction which are involving this specific uh, chemical compound. Uh, as mentioned previously, uh, Rhea is a quartet. It means that if we have the information, we specify the, the, the reaction direction. So for example, thanks to this publication here, we know that the reaction proceed in the forward um, direction. So this is also an important information which is related to a, to a publication. And in the function section, you can find a lot of additional um, uh, functional information related to enzymes, such as the activity regulation, uh, the pH dependence, the temperature dependence, in which pathway this uh, reaction uh, is part of. Uh, so here you see that it, the, the reaction is part of two different pathways, the cholesterol metabolism and sphingolipid metabolism. And you also have information on the active sites, and you can have a link we will see in a few minutes to the 3D structure of the protein. 
in the function section, you also have a list of uh, gene ontology. Uh, so the, the Swiss Prod bio curator work in tight collaboration with the Go Consortium. And when they read a paper, they annotate the corresponding Go term. And uh, as Anne mentioned before, the Go molecular function, there are even more big work done, in, done on it thanks to the collaboration between uh, the gene ontology, the reactome, and the REA uh, biocurator. You can also have in, um, information on the subcellular location so of the protein. So in this case, I said before, the protein was in the lysosome. Um, so this allowed to make quite complex queries such as find all the human enzymes which are linked to any lipid and found in the Golgi with experimental evidence. So this is the, the query you can do. For more info, we, we will give, I will give you more info later on. We also collect a lot of information about the post-translational modification and the processing of the protein. So these uh, information are in the PTM processing uh, section. And uh, now uh, Uniprot is uh, using about 600 distinct modified residue. And uh, all these uh, information are uh, in this section. One of the projects now is also to map all the post-translational modification to KB. So as I said, these 600 distinct modified residue have to be mapped to the KB uh, vocabulary. And this will help then to make the links between the PTM and which uh, uh, reaction is involved in this uh, PTM and then to find the corresponding enzyme in Uniprot, which is doing the reaction, uh, adding, for example, a palmitolid serine on the, on the protein. So this is the, the next goal, is to really to map all the small molecules um, and derivatives to only one chemical namespace, uh, namely KB. And we start now to do that for the post translational modification. Another important information which is stored in SwissProt is the, um, the link of the, prot of the gene with the genetic disease. So you see here that this, uh, this gene is, uh, is associated with uh, three different uh, genetic diseases. You have the link to all the different variants which have been annotated here and which lead to the corresponding genetic disease. And this is done in tight collaboration with CleanVar. So the biocurator involved in this annotation used the standard guideline for the interpretation of sequence variants. And they are uh, tightly collaborating with uh, CleanVar to improve the, the annotation of uh, the pathogenicity of each variant. And of course, we also put the link to the Ondelian Medellinda inheritance in mind, so the OMIM uh, databases, if you want to have additional information on the disease, you can go from this uh, cross link here. So as I say at the beginning, this type of information allow to do the queries, such as how many human enzymes are involved in dopamine and are associated with a genetic disease. And if you do the query, you see that there are three uh, genes which are um, uh, actually uh, doing this type of, uh, which are involving dopamine metabolism and associated with a genetic disease. Last but not least, uh, we provide also the, the link to the 3D structure. So in the structure section, you have the link to the PDB entries. And uh, what is done here by the by SwissProt is to map the position of on the canon canonical protein sequence to map the position of the protein which is available in 3D structure. And also at the end, now we have integrated all the prediction done by a deep uh, deep mine uh, into the database AlphaFold, and you have access to the prediction, and you see that it covered the entire sequence the entire protein sequence. 
So an overview can is available by using the feature viewer. So if you click here, you have access to all the annotation related to the protein sequence, and you have access to the 3D structure, which is uh, appearing on the on the bottom. So you can click on, for example, the active site. You see the localization of the active site in the in the protein sequence, and you can see it on the on the 3D structure. So in summary, uh, by linking uh, Uniprot, Swissprot with Rhea and uh, KB, you have uh, a wealth of information uh, on enzymes such as the function, the catalytic activity, and the cofactor, which are directly linked to KB, to KB and Rhea. And then all information such as the biophysical chemical property, the enzyme regulation, the pathway, the active site, the binding of the ligand, and this also, this topic will be mapped to KB very soon, as well as the post translational modification, uh, as I say, which will be a link to KB soon. And all, all these information are linked then to the 3D structure of the protein and the subcellular location and genetic disease. Uh, this is the coverage of Uniprot by Rhea. So you see here the number of uh, Prot, uh, Uniprot uh, Swissprot entry linked to Rhea, the number of unique Rhea reaction in Swissprot, and the number of unique KB in Swissprot. And here you have a taxonomy dis distribution of all the reactions which are available in uh, Swissprot. And you see that we cover all the three, uh, the big uh, three uh, section of life. Now, I will just say a few words about Tremble. So if I go back to the query I did at the beginning, so uh, I will choose this entry, which has exactly the same number of amino acids as the Swiss protein entry. So we will focus on this uh, Tremble entry here. So when you click on the Tremble entry, you see that you are in the Tremble entry because the statute is unreviewed. It means that in this case, it has, it has been um, only annotated by computer prediction. And uh, these records uh, are uh, waiting for full manual annotation. So the protein sequence in Tremble uh, as I said at the beginning, in Trumbull, you have one record, one protein sequence, one species. So 100% identical sequence are merged together. And the source of protein sequence is the same as for the Swiss protein tree. It's the public nucleotide sequence databases. But in this case, there is no sequence correction and no sequence validation. So we just take uh, the sequence, which is provided by the submitter and this sequence will be directly the sequence which is appearing in the Tremble entry. And the functional annotation. So this is exactly the same gene as the one we've seen previously in Swissprot, but in Tremble. So you see you have the catalytic activity with the rare reactions here. You have also the Go molecular function. And you see that all the source of uh, information are also indicated. So in Tremble, the, the functional information comes from Unirule, which are the rules which are manually generated by BioCurator. Uh, they are also annotated by um, automated uh, generated rules. So the ARBA annotation is done by rules which are automatically done according to the content of the Swiss Pro entry. So there is no review by uh, the expert BioCurator. Some, some of these, the, the information are imported from uh, other databases or come from a prediction, for example, prediction of transmembrane, signal peptide, transmembrane, coil coil, or disorder, disorder region. And if we look more carefully on the catalytic activity here, where does this information come from? So if uh, we see the first one here, we see that the information comes from Unirule, 
So we click here and have an information of the, on, the, on this rule. So this real reaction has been associated with this protein sequence because the protein sequence contains uh, several specific protein signatures here from BFAM, Panther, and also the taxonomy um, should be uh, bacteria, fungi, and metazoa. And if the protein sequence match this uh, condition here, meets, meets this condition, then all these annotations apply. Uh, so including the protein name, the EC number, the catalytic activity, uh, here is the, the real reaction uh, mentioned here, keywords and other uh, annotation. And if we look at this uh, catalytic activity here, it comes from ARBA in this case. So ARBA is uh, constructed according to the annotation of uh, found in the Swiss protein tree, but it's a multi-class learning system which is trained uh, on, on this uh, Swiss protein tree, but with, which are not these uh, these rules are not uh, validated by bio-curators. So the rules here are the, the protein match um, an interpro uh, signature too, and the taxon is for data. And because there are these conditions here, then the sequence is annotated and linked to the catalytic activity, which is uh, described here. So in Tremble, um, so this is the number of enzyme in Tremble, and you see the number of unique real reaction and the, the number of unique KB, uh, uh, which are available yet uh, in, uh, in uh, Tremble. Marie-Claude, so, sorry to, to, to interrupt. It's just to say, can you come back to the last slide? So it's just to say to the people, because we can see here that the number of uh, reaction provided is greater than the react content. It's just because Marie-Claude take into account the undefined direction and the case where some directed reaction have been annotated. So you, you have undirected plus the physiological uh, direction left to right or right to left. This is why the number of uh, rare ID is greater than what we, we have in the current uh, release. So we have, in fact, in terms of unique transformation, it's a, a little bit less than 10,000 10, in, uh, in Swiss pot. Sorry, I made a mistake when uh, I gave you the, the numbers, Marie Claude. No, it's also my fault. Thank you for the, for the comment. So thanks to all these um, uh, information which are stored in, uh, in Uniprot, Swissprot, and Trouble, you can do quite complex query uh, by using just the Uniprot website. So for uh, you can use the simple search and um, all uh, resources, so meaning uh, individual entries as well as set of retrieved by query will be accessible using simple URL that can be bookmarked and linked and used uh, in programs. So here, for example, you have a URL with a link to a, to a specific uh, Tremble entry. And here you have a complex URL uh, for all the protein, which are um, the human protein, which are associated with a disease, which involve uh, dopamine, uh, which are linked to a dopamine. You can use, of course, the advanced search. When you know the different section of uh, Uniprot entry, you can query uh, the different uh, section of an entry. If you don't know anything and you have no idea where you, um, your query is found, you can just look in the field here. And if you tap Rhea or Kebi, it will give you the field in which you find a Rhea identifier or Kebi identifier or you can choose the field uh, directly. So for example, if I say KB, you will see that you can find a KB in the function catalytic activity, as I, as I described this uh, previously, or you can also find KB uh, in the cofactor section. I've not mentioned it, but it's uh, also a section where you can find KB uh, identifier. 
And if you query by small molecule, you can query at the same time the catalytic activity and the cofactor. And as we are going to, to map uh, post-transactional modification to KB and also the binding site, the ligand to KB, soon when we, we, you will query small molecules, you will query in all these different sections uh, of an entry. So one of the examples uh, I've shown before was um, looking at all, how many human enzymes are involved in dopamine and are associated with a genetic disease. So if you query, for example, just for Uniprot in, uh, for Homo sapiens, you just start typing Homo sapiens, you will uh, see Homo sapiens and the tax ID appearing. And this is the number of entry you get uh, in Swissprot, in Tremble, all together, and you have a mention here of the proteome. So in, uh, as I said before, we provide a set of uh, records of proteins which are supposed to be expressed by a given organism whose genomes have been completely sequenced. And these sets of protein, of selected protein, are called proteomes. So for human, we estimate that there are about seven, uh, 79,000 uh, uh, records which are uh, the product of all the gene, all the human genes. And then if you restrict um, uh, the query to, to proteome, you see that you have a number of entries in Swissprot and a number of entries in Tremble. Uh, for some, uh, for some uh, organisms, all the genes are in, uh, in Swissprot. It means that when you click for, when you look for proteome, you have a complete set of genes in, uh, in Swissprot. And this is the case for humans. So the number you see here corresponds to the number of genes in the human genome. But this is not the case for all species. So for human, it is the case. For Saccharomyces cerevisiae, it is the case. All the, the, the genes are in the Swiss prod section. But for example, for Drosophila melanogaster, who has about 13,000 genes, only 3,000 genes are in Swiss prod. The rest are still in tremble, so meaning that they are still only annotated by computer. So if you have any question at that level, never hesitate to contact us. Uh, it's very important because when you want to work on a complete proteome, you have to know what are the data sets you're going to use. So for human, I said there are 20,360 uh, 20, human genes. And then you can uh, select the one which are annotated with the disease. So you, you, you select pathology and biotech disease, and you see that there are 4, 000, about more than 4,000 genes which are involved in, the in genetic disease in human. And then if you look at the protein, which are enzymes in the, in the human proteome, so this is the query. You should find entry which have at least a catalytic activity or a, a NC number. And just for this point here, uh, it's not possible to know the number of, uh, of uh, enzymes uh, which are encoded by the human genes. So nobody knows for sure. This is the answer of Christian Axelsen to a user request. We don't know. Uh, because we don't know the roles of a substantial number of human genes. Uh, for example, um, 5,000 human genes, we don't know the function of this gene yet. And also, uh, some, uh, as uh, Anne says, some known enzymes are currently missing EC numbers. So this is also why we could not have a complete set. And also there are a lot of enzymes which are uh, complex, uh, which are interact, which are different, which are composed of different subunits. So what you count as a, as a protein enzyme. And also if you count all the isoforms. So uh, Christian thinks that there are about 40% of human genes which are coding for enzymes. And then uh, if you do, if you mix both query, you, you find at the end that about 
1,400 genes are enzymes which are involved in, uh, in genetic disease. And uh, if you add dopamine in your, uh, in your query, you get the three genes I mentioned before, uh, which uh, are involved in a genetic disease and which are metabolizing uh, dopamine. So this table of results can be downloaded, can be customized and can be shared with your colleague. So if you want to customize your result table, it's the same as in the REA website, you can uh, add column and you can save, and then you will have uh, more specific interaction uh, information such as the, the EC number, the, the REA ID, and the different name and um, description of the genetic disease which are linked to this uh, human gene. And you can share the URL with your colleague uh, by clicking on this button here. And this is the URL. And if you want to add colon, you can also uh, do it uh, either manually or uh, by doing the query directly on the website. And if you want to have additional information, you can go to our help page uh, following this link. OK, so as um, I don't know, maybe I will skip this because uh, we are uh, quite short in time. So there are quite a lot of different uh, query you can do on the Uniprod website. You can look, look at all the enzymes which are linked to lipid, uh, which have a 3D structure. You can look to all the proteins which are linked to lipid, which are found in the Golgi. Uh, you can link for protein uh, linked to lipid, which contain at least one transmembrane domain. So there are a lot of different query you can do. And if you go to this link here, you will see other example of query, of complex query, which can be done uh, with the Uniprot website. You can also download uh, your query in different format, HTML, FASTA, uh, LDF, or text. And uh, yeah, and that's it. So uh, as a summary, you can see that uh, Uniprot now by Having integrating uh, integrating uh, KB and Rea provides um, machine readable uh, small molecule data, and you can really have access to a lot of data in a, in a very nice uh, manner. And it's uh, improving um, the support for computational studies of metabolic systems, enzyme enzyme function and evolution, omics data, and resource integration. But as I said from the beginning, beware the difference between the Uniprot SwissProt and Uniprot Tremble uh, entry content, uh, because depending on the, the data set you will have, the statistic you will do on it may, may be different, uh, depending if, you put, if your uh, records come from SwissProt or from Tremble. And as mentioned, uh, uh, by Anne and, and me, you can access uh, Uniprot through uh, the website, the REST API, API, and Sparkle. And Anne is going to give you some examples of Sparkle query uh, in the next part. So this is the Swiss Pro team, and I thank you for your attention. Let's let's start with this uh, last um, last section about Semantic Web uh, RDF uh, Sparkle. So I will present a brief introduction of what Semantic Web is, then we will see what RDF and Sparkle means. And I will show you a free example of uh, Sparkle queries using, using RIA and uh, Uniprot uh, data. So what is Semantic Web? Semantic Web, also called Web 3.0, is an extension of the World Wide Web standard set by the uh, W3C uh, consortium. The goal of the Semantic Web is to make internet data machine readable. So we have seen that uh, we presented to you several ontology this afternoon. So KB, REA, Uniprot, etc. that describe concepts and relationships between these uh, concepts, these entities and categories of, of things. 
And now, uh, the semantic web enable the encoding of uh, semantics with the data, with uh, technology such as RDF for resource description framework and OWL for web ontology uh, language, which are similar technology OWL, allowing reasoning of our data. And both technology allows to operate with heterogeneous data sources. So according to the W3C, the semantic web provides a common framework that allow data to be shared and reused across application. Enterprise is not really our um, scope and the community uh, boundaries. Say it different, differently, we can say that the semantic web is therefore regarded as an integrator across different content and information, application, and systems. The story began uh, quite early in, in the group. So it began in 2003 in the group of uh, Nicole uh, Bredaski. It was with uh, Eric, uh, Eric Jane. But now Jan van Bolman is really our specialist of uh, semantic web uh, technologies. So what is uh, RDF? RDF is a directed uh, label graph data format for representing information. So it was for the, for the web. RDF for resource description framework is organized as a triple. So sometimes you can see RDF triple where you have a subject, a predicate and an object. So it's a very uh, simple. So here you have the text and you have the same representation in a graph model where you have two nodes, subject and object and an edge, which is predicate. Let's say a simple uh, example. For example, Tom lives in Geneva. So you can have this graphical representation. We have a node for Tom, which is a subject. The predicate, predicate is lives in, and the object is Geneva. We can also say Geneva is in Switzerland. And at, uh, an object can be the subject for another travel. So in that case, Geneva. Be, uh, becomes a subject and is in Switzerland, which is the object. So if uh, for a human being, it's very uh, easy to infer information with this kind of uh, graph. Tom lives in Geneva. Geneva is in Switzerland. We can infer that Tom is, lives in uh, Switzerland. It's very complicated for a machine, but thanks to this uh, new uh, format, it's now uh, possible to do such, uh, such inference. How the subject predicate and object uh, are represented, what they are containing. So for most of them, they contain what is called URI for Uniform Resource Identifier. It's a compact sequence of character that identifies uh, abstract or physical uh, resource. You have here two examples, one for Uniprot and the other for, for Rhea. We will see later some concrete uh, examples. You can have also, you can also use uh, literal like uh, string, integer, float, boolean with true or false value or uh, literal like uh, date. Why it's important to have this URI? Let's say that I am 9993. Would like, would you like a floor? But what is a 9993? It can be an NCBI PubMed, it can be the identifier for an NCBI gene, or it can be an NCBI taxon ID for Marmota, Marmota, which is certainly what this Marmota wanted to, to say. So all these resources have the same, use the same number, but it's very important to have this prefix to distinguish between them. So this is this URI that we can use in, uh, in RDF uh, representation as it's a little bit complete, complex to, to write. It's a little bit uh, over verbose. So we can define some prefix. So let's say that I, I define the prefix PubMed, which correspond to the first part of this URI. 
I do the same for taxon and NCBI gene. And now my uh, three identifier are associated to the prefix and it's uh, easier for human to, to read. So here in an example of some triples from the Uniprot uh, resource. So uh, we can express that this Uniprot accession as a mnemonic, which is PNCA me too. This uh, entry is also classified with a given uh, keyword. I'll show you uh, Marie Claude. And this keyword has a label that is antibiotic uh, resistance, for, for instance. So all the information that you have seen this afternoon can be translated using this format. So it's really for machine, not for, for, for human, but everything can be explicitly uh, defined. There are several formats like Turtle or RDF XML. The purpose is not to, to go into the detail of this format, just to know that they, they exist. What is important is that in this format, we have one URI per resource. So one thing, one identifier to be sure that we can connect things together. And also something important is that now there is a large community using a semantic, uh, semantic web. And we can reuse in some project ontologies that have been defined by other groups. And we can work together in order to simplify the, the work. So now let's go to the next part, which is uh, Sparkle. So Parker, Sparkle is the query language for RDF. Sparkle is a recursive acronym. Computer scientists love recursive acronyms. So it stands for Sparkle Protocol and RDF Query Language. So Sparkle is a query language which is used to express query on uh, RDF uh, data sources using, once again, a set of uh, triple, subject, predicate, and object to, to, to perform the, the query. For those who know um, relational database, SQL, uh, SQL language, it's, uh, it's uh, very uh, similar. Sparkle supports aggregation, subqueries, negation, so, so uh, something uh, that is similar to what you can find in, uh, in relational databases. And a Sparkle endpoint is an HTTP service uh, that is able of receiving and processing Sparkle uh, protocol uh, request. So the Uniprot Sparkle uh, endpoint is available at uh, this uh, address, sparkle.uniprot.org. It is available from the Uniprot website. So you have an entry point here on the Uniprot web page. And it opens this window that contains several sections. One section to put your, your query, some example to start with the resource, as well as some documentation. So all the, the information in the Uniprot project as a whole is represented in RDF, and it corresponds to 49 billions of triple, which is a very big uh, amount of, uh, of data. You can query. Uh, all this data uh, from the default uh, graph, but if you are interested, you can, there are some name graph that allow you to specific uh, data sets. So I, uh, we will show some example with Uniprot KB. Uh, you understand Swissprot and, and Tremble, but you can see that in this data set, we also have information on the enzyme classification, Uniprot enzyme. So this section represents the entire data set for the uh, EC numbers and all their associated uh, information, for instance. In RIA, we have also a RIA Sparkle endpoint at this uh, address, sparkle.ria-db.org. The Sparkle endpoint is also available from the RIA web page. And it opens this, uh, this window, which has a similar organization with a place to, to put your, your query, some example, and some documentation. In this case, you can see that it's a very small data set compared to, to Uniprot. So the RIA Sparkle endpoint contains data from the RIA.rdf and the kb.all uh, file. 
So we are we are on a, a snapshot of baby that is synchronized with uh, with Ria. And for both, we only have 3 million of tripers. So we are very, very uh, small compared to the Uniprot uh, data set. And as I told you before, these data sets are synchronized with the Uniprot RDF data releases. So let's see some example, the power of this uh, new, new technology and how we can bridge uh, chemistry and, uh, and biology with different uh, resources we, we saw this, uh, this afternoon, we presented this afternoon. So as I told you, all the information encoded in uh, the display in the RIA website is uh, encoded by this, uh, this data model where you have the main, uh, the main classes of, uh, of the domain. So for instance, a reaction is uh, composed of two, so this, uh, this entity is uh, composed of two reaction side. Reaction side contains reaction participants. Reaction participants are linked to KB, but we have seen that we have different kinds of participants. We have small molecules with a direct link to KB. We have also, uh, so we have some difference in the naming because for historical uh, reasons, so macromolecules are, named in the RIA.RDF generic compounds. So we have generic polypeptide for the protein and generic polynucleotide for the nucleic uh, acids. And these uh, macromolecules have uh, a reactive part and this reactive part is linked to KB. And in case of polymer, the uh, polymer entries are linked to the uh, underlying KB uh, polymer. So let's start with, uh, with a simple uh, query, which is uh, a query simplified. So it's a query example provided in the website, but it has been uh, simplified for, for this afternoon, where I would like to retrieve all the reaction and the equation that have a specific KB. So the KB encoding L, uh, describing L-glutamate as reaction participants. So this query mimics something that we can do on the website using this uh, query. We just have to query with uh, the, the KB uh, ID uh, as we've seen, but just for uh, illustration. So here on the left, you have the Sparkle uh, query. You have three parts. The first part, we define the prefix. Then we define what we would like to select. Here, I want a KB rare ID and equation. Uh, the question mark in uh, this um, technology means that it's a variable. And I put the constraint I want to, to verify. So I can uh, show you the same uh, query, but now graphically. So I want to retrieve some reaction. So a, a variable called the question mark reaction, that is a subclass of the real reaction. I want to retrieve from the predicate H RH equation, it's a reaction equation. This reaction has a reaction side. Reaction side contains reaction participant. Reaction participant contains a compound and this compound are linked to KB. And I want this KB to be restricted to one specific uh, value. So, you just have to put the Sparkle query into the, to fill the, the text box with your Sparkle query. And then you click on the submit uh, query button and you get a table with the result that, uh, that correspond to your, your query and fill the, the constraint. So in fact, doing Sparkle query, it's like, so in, in this, in the case of this uh, query, it's just like a sub graph of the whole, uh, the whole rea, rea graph. Okay, so we start from reaction and we go to, to KB and this is what we have did with this, uh, what we did with uh, this, uh, this query. So once you have designed one query, you can obviously change just uh, uh, the KBID for other KB of interest, and you can reuse your uh, your query. So it's very easy. So that's true that the learning curve is a little bit hard with uh, with RDF Sparkle, but once you can start 
with, with it. It's a very uh, powerful, uh, powerful tool. And we are welcome to help you to design your, your queries if you need. Uh, let's see a second example. I would like to retrieve uh, human enzyme, reviewed human enzyme metabolizing and acyl sphingosine. So n acyl sphingosine is a class of compounds with a non-defined group, an air group. And I would like to retrieve all the children or descendants of these compounds that can be participants of a rare reaction. The first part of the query, retrieve reviewed human enzyme, cannot be done in, a, in RIA because it's the scope of Uniprot. So we don't duplicate the information. So we uh, can uh, set the query that correspond to uh, this part in, uh, in Uniprot. So I want to retrieve protein that are reviewed, true. So it's to retrieve a Swiss proton trees. I want this protein are linked to taxono the taxonomy ID 99. 9606, sorry, which is the taxon ID for, for Homo sapiens. I would like these proteins to be annotated to have catalytic activity annotation and associated to uh, rare reaction. Unip Uniprot RDF only contains uh, rare reaction URIs, no more information on the reaction. Now we go on the rare side. So in RIA, similarly to the que uh, query we performed previously, we can have the same kind of uh, queries. And uh, the difference here is, is instead of giving a, a specific uh, KB ID, here I want to retrieve all the KB that are subclass of, so all the descendants of the KB that encode the N-acyl uh, sphingosine or N-acyl sphinx for uh, enine, as we call it in, uh, in RIA and, uh, and Uniprot. As the URI's reaction are common both to Uniprot and RIA, we are uh, now able to merge on this, to join on this uh, identical URI, and we can perform what we call a federated query. So here is the query corresponding uh, to, to answer our question. So it will be sent uh, from the RIA uh, endpoint. So you have, uh, you remember the prefix, the select and the condition. And here we have an additional block, which is a service to the Uniprot endpoint with the query for this, uh, for this part. So say differently in terms, so our query is to retrieve compounds with uh, reaction catalyzing N-acyl sphingosine and their human uh, enzyme. So the user uh, sent the Sparkle query to the RIA uh, Sparkle endpoint with a constraint on KB and RIA. The subset of uh, results are sent to the Uniprot Sparkle uh, endpoint. It filters on uh, Uniprot uh, proteins that uh, correspond to the constraint and CBI tax ID and the corresponding reaction. It returns the proteins result to the real endpoint and it returns the result to the user. So it's an example of one federated query using one service. So here is the result of our query in real. So we have a table with our result. In this table, you have some links. So for example, this is a URI of a Uniprot entry, but uh, we provide a redirection to the Uniprot uh, website in order that you can uh, access to the full content of the resource. Similarly, the RIA uh, URI are uh, redirected to the RIA URL corresponding to the query for the specific uh, reaction. I show you an example where it was uh, starting from the rare endpoint, but we can do exactly, uh, in the, exactly the same way, the same query, but from the Uniprot uh, Sparkle endpoint. So here I send the query and I send a service to, to RIA, and we got the same result with links to the different resources as I show you just previously. Now let me show you a more complex uh, example, which is a spatial metabolic 
metabolomics use case, where, for example, we would like to create a mapping of small molecules, let's say sterols, to anatomical structures. So we don't have this information in Rhea, we don't have this information in, uh, in Uniprot. So we need to use a fund resource. This uh, requires the curated gene expression data from BG, which is another SIB, uh, SIB resource. And now I can uh, set my question as where are located the human genes encoding enzymes that metabolize sterile derivatives? So we want this query will map all the members of the class of sterol to an anatomical structure in, in human. So here it's a query with two services, one for us. So a query executed at the Uniprot uh, endpoint with two services, one for rare to retrieve the rare reaction. So you see the KB that are subclass of this specific uh, compound. In Uniprot, we constrain on the taxonomy, uh, taxon ID of, uh, of human. We want uh, Swiss proton trees. We want an annotation, catalytic, catalytic activity annotation to get the rare reaction. And additionally, what we will uh, add is the link between this Uniproton tree and ensemble gene, because BG has also uh, links to uh, ensemble genes. So we can uh, join with uh, our data on these ensemble genes. And from BG, we can uh, retrieve the corresponding gene, uh, BG gene, and uh, retrieve the uh, anatomic entity ID that are encoded in different uh, ontology, one of them being uh, Uberon, and also the name of these uh, entities. So this is a uh, schematic representation of, of, the same, uh, of the same process. We send the query, we go to RIA, we come back to Uniprot, we go to BG, we come back to Uniprot, and Uniprot uh, endpoint will send the result to the end user, to the end user. So once you have uh, your query design, you put it in the Sparkle uh, query uh, endpoint, you submit and you get the uh, you get the result as a table as I show you previously, and uh, you have several ways to export the, the format in different format XML, JSON, CSV, it's, uh, like comma uh, separated tab, and uh, you can also share the URL if you want to uh, redo this uh, this query uh, later. So here it's an export of the result. And from this query, we can get a selection of more than 45,000 uh, results. And for each uh, human uh, enzyme, we can have the location of the chemical entities, the sterile derivatives, and their uh, location in leukocyte, uh, liver, or whatever. Uh, whatever we, we have. So this is a really, really uh, powerful uh, tool. I will stop showing uh, over example, but just to, to give you the flavor to, in order that you have the flavor, but you can explore and exploit the enormous richness of uh, Uniprot uh, with this kind of, uh, with this kind of uh, query. You can, uh, with Sparkle Query, perform structural uh, searches. Uh, like IDSM uh, SACHEM, uh, they are uh, IDSM SACHEM is used in the uh, RIA website, but behind it's a Sparkle query, so you can do exactly the same uh, directly in, in Sparkle. You can link the data to disease as uh, Marie Claude uh, show, cofactor, PTM, fruity structure, uh, similar sequence with the uh, UniRF uh, cluster, or homologue sequence with other resources like OrthoDB and uh, OmeVatar, Oma Oma other SIB resource and uh, uh, referenced in, uh, in Uniprot. You can play with uh, taxonomy. For instance, I want to retrieve all the reactions that are only found in uh, bacteria or uh, archaea, whatever you want. And we can also work on, uh, on complete proteome. So during the practicals, we will do uh, some, uh, some of our uh, 
case. And uh, Sparkle can be used also in a programmatic access. I show you uh, with a Sparkle endpoint uh, interface, but you can perform Sparkle query from uh, using different uh, programming language. So for me, uh, I am using a Jupyter notebook and, and Python to, to, to process the, the data and check, check data uh, consistency. So you can uh, perform, you have an example of uh, Sparkle query that you can process and then you can access to, to our Python library in order to, to draw and diagram whatever you want here. It's an example where we, we can compute the taxonomic distribution of the real reaction according to the Uniprot annotation. If you want to learn more about uh, RDF, uh, RDF Sparkle, you can access to, to this uh, URL, to, to this course, when uh, you will have other uh, course related to other um, Sparkle RDF uh, SIB uh, resource, like uh, Nextprot, like uh, uh, I say BG, OMA, OrthoDB, and all these uh, all these resources. So uh, accessing to this course will give you all the material available. And I think now we are near to to finish uh, to finish this uh, this training course. So I would like to acknowledge uh, all people involved in the uh, in the RIA project. So the PI is uh, Alan Bridge, and uh, we have I am show you the the RIA bio curators and the RIA developers that are doing a tremendous uh, tremendous work. And I would like also to, to thank uh, the KB uh, curators, Adnan uh, Garrett and uh, directed by, uh, by Andrew Leach. We have also, we, we told you this collaboration, react to go and react to, to react home. So the uh, Go Consortium in the person of Harold uh, Drapkin, Chris Mangal, Jim Balov, Paul Thomas and uh, David, uh, David Hills and Pascal Godet that I forgot on, on this slide. I'm sorry for her. Uh, Peter De Stachio for Reactom, and we collaborate also with uh, IDS and guys, uh, Jacob and, uh, and Jerry, and uh, we gratefully acknowledge the software contribution of, uh, of KMAX. And acknowledgement for Uniprot uh, too. So as uh, Marie-Claude said, it's a consortium of uh, EBI, ML EBI. So all the people are in green. The uh, American one with uh, KTV from KTV team are in uh, in blue and in red it's the CIB, uh, CIB ones with uh, Alan Bridge uh, group. Voila. So I'd like to thank you for your attention and if you have uh, additional question, we can uh, we can go to this uh, to this session or maybe you are totally dead.